Were white people really the first people to end slavery, as Candace Owens claims? Stay tuned right after this. Hey guys, what's up? This is attorney Chloe Corbett, also known as the Duchess of Justice. I am one half of the Defiant Lawyers, where we provide legal analysis of trending politics, policies, personalities, and pop culture to empower you to defy this unjust legal system and nullify systemic racism. I decided to make this video today, one, because Candace Owens has been trending the last week or so. Uh, she has been on a black media tour where she's going on the Joe Budden podcast, uh, the Breakfast Club and other uh, black media outlets, which is something she had never done before. But as I've gone through the rabbit hole of the craziness that Candace Owens has said uh, over the last few years that she's been in the public eye, I came across a disturbing video that she made in connection with Prager Uni University uh, regarding slavery. Now, keep in mind, this video is one, it's an animated video about slavery. It is a video that is aimed for children, and it has so many misconceptions, lies, and deceit in it about slavery in this country. So I thought that I would hop up here pretty quickly and rebut the three main points that she made in the video before we get into the contents of the video. And we're not going to play that video here because of copyright reasons, but I do have a transcript of everything that Candace Owens said in that video. So I'm going to go through it and dispute every one of her points. For those of you all who don't know, Prager University is not a real university. It is a 501c3 nonprofit advocacy group and media organization that creates content promoting conservative viewpoints on various political, economic, and sociological topics. It was founded in 2009 by Alan Estrin and by talk show host Dennis Prager. Despite the name including the word university in it, Prager University is not an academic institution and it does not confer degrees. Their videos contain misleading or factually incorrect information promoting climate change denial. Historians and political scientists have also criticized their videos for containing misleading or inaccurate claims about topics such as slavery, which we're going to get into today, and racism in the United States. I can join in on those historians and political scientists to show and prove why the claims made in that video about slavery are misleading and false. So there you have it. Uh, Candace Owens joined up with a conservative advocacy group that has no, is not a university, which I believe is, is misleading in and of itself uh, to make these, these crazy claims. So let's go through her first point. So I'm going to read how she starts the video out. She says, quote, and now for a brief history of slavery. Here's the first thing you need to know. Slavery was not invented by white people. It did not start in 1619 when the first slaves came to Jamestown. It existed before then. She starts by saying that slavery was not invented by white people. Notice she doesn't start off acknowledging the atrocities of slavery in this country and the horrible consequences and effects that it's had on the African American community in this country that we're still feeling today. She starts with giving an excuse to white people by saying, as anyone who has studied history knows, slavery obviously was not invented by white people. Slavery has been around for millennia, uh, since biblical times, in various cultures across the world. We know that. What the focus has been on in America has been chattel slavery, which is the viewing of human beings as property. Now, a lot of conservatives will point to the Bible in which the Bible in the Old Testament, specifically one place in Leviticus, uh, states that Israel can take other nations as chattel slaves. So we know that there was chattel slavery in the Bible, but there are huge unique differences between what white people here in America uh, use chattel slavery for against African Americans and the type of slavery that was in the Bible and in various cultures. And I wanna break down what those differences are. 
So I want to turn your attention to the Encyclopedia of Race, Ethnicity, and Society. Uh, Richard Schaefer is the editor of that encyclopedia. He received his BA from Northwestern University and his MA and PhD from the University of Chicago for psychology. So let's get into what uh, an article in this encyclopedia states about slavery. First, quote, slavery is a central component in the history of economics and race relations in the United States. Slavery is significant in this volume because it connects the expansion of the original U.S. colonies and identifies the origins of racism and racial oppression. So that's the first distinction between chattel slavery here in the U.S. and slavery that existed in prior cultures and countries. Here it is connected to the origins of racism and racial oppression against African Americans. It is the basis, it is the foundation, it is the originator of racial oppression of, of black people in this country. They go on to say, quote, the enslavement of millions of Africans was legitimized for the economic growth of Europe through the development of the West Indies and the Americas. The new world was deemed most profitable and enslaved Africans were used to harvest cash crops such as cotton, tobacco, rice, and sugar. The slave system in North America became law early in the 17th century and legalized the ownership of one person by another. So that's another distinction. Millions of Africans were enslaved to help Europe grow. Great Britain, Portugal, France, Italy, it helped the economic growth of Europe. That is another distinction between chattel slavery that occurred in America and chattel slavery in biblical times and slavery in previous countries as well. So when you see Buckingham Palace and you see all of the jewels and the monarchies in uh, Western Europe, in Sweden and Belgium and uh, England and, and Ireland, a lot of it came off of the backs of the oppression and enslavement of African people in the Caribbean and in the Americas. That's where a lot of their riches came from. And that's why they turned to slavery. They viewed people as property so that they could get money, which is absolutely horrendous. Now, the encyclopedia says that the process of legalizing slavery made the slave system in North America unique. Because slavery was incorporated into the laws of the land, slavery was passed on to children from the mother and was a closed system. The legalization of slavery reinforced the inferior status of blacks and institutionalized racism. Okay? So again, slavery became law in this country. It was entrenched from our constitution on down to state codes and at the local level. It was not just a custom of this country. It was not just a practice of some people in this country. It was the law of the land. Just like there are laws that uh, govern what we can and can't do with our bodies, what we can and can't do with our property, slavery was legalized just as any other law in this country. And it became something that was entrenched from the federal level on down to the state and local level. I'm really trying to get you all to see what chattel slavery was really like in this country. Okay? It wasn't just something that was just a practice by a certain group of people. It was law. The law said that African Americans could be sold as property. There are deeds that you can go to if you look in southern states, in some of those counties, you can go look at property deeds to figure out what your ancestry is. We did it with our own family, okay? There is a very well-respected book entitled How Europe Underdeveloped Africa by Walter Rodney that really delves deep into how Europe basically dismantled Africa and I want to read some of the, some excerpts out of that book. Uh, Dr. Rodney says, Therefore, by control of the seas, Europe took the first steps toward transforming the several parts of Africa and Asia into economic satellites. Again, the legalization of slavery was to help the economic growth of Europe. 
Okay. Dr. Rodney goes on to say, when Europeans reached the Americas, they recognized its potential in gold and silver and tropical produce, but that potential could not be made a reality without adequate labor supplies. The indigenous Indian population could not withstand new European diseases such as smallpox, nor could they bear the organized toil of slave, planta slave plantations and slave mines having barely emerged from the hunting stage. This is why in islands like Cuba and Hispaniola, the local Indian po population was virtually wiped out by the white invaders. At the same time, Europe itself had a very small population and could not afford to release the labor required to tap the wealth of the Americas. Therefore, they turned to the nearest continent, Africa. But Dr. Rodney details that Africa had a population accustomed to settled agriculture and disciplined labor. So this notion that Africa is a continent just full of savages and just a dark place is incorrect and false. We'll get into that later. So let's go back to what else Candace falsely claims in her video. She says, she goes on to her second point. Here's the second thing you need to know. White people were the first to formally put an end to slavery. In 1833, Britain was the first country in the history of the world to pass a slavery abolition act. False, 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 false. That is absolutely, objectively not true. The first country to abolish slavery was Haiti. When they overthrew the French colonialists and the slavers that had been in the country in 1804. Let's go through it. I am going to be reading from Dr. Marlene Dalt, an article that she wrote. Uh, she is a scholar and she studies race and social economic issues. And she wrote an article about how Haiti destroyed slavery and led the way to freedom throughout the Atlantic world. And I want to read some excerpts from her. I encourage you all to go and read this article. It is very, very informative. It's good. Uh, she wrote it. It just came out January 9th of this year, and I think everyone should read it. I also encourage you all to go back and uh, listen to the video that we put up about Haiti and Haitian independence and its effect on African Americans as well. I'll make sure to link that in the description box. So Dr. Dalt says the first land to be colonized in the Americas was Haiti. Europeans first enslaved Native Americans and captive Africans there too. But the first permanent abolition of slavery also happened on Haiti in 1804, which was 220 years ago this year. Such abolition only occurred in the rest of the Americas later, much, much later. White people were not the first to abolish slavery. Black people, black Haitians were. Again, the purpose of Candace's video that she put out was to absolve and excuse white Europeans and white Americans for the evil legacy of slavery in this country. That's the entire purpose of the video and not to be accurate with the facts. Let's continue. Dr. Dog goes on to say, quote, Haiti's radical defeat of French colonizers and the slavers which opened the door for slavery to be outlawed everywhere in the Atlantic world is not how abolition is remembered today. Let me read that again. Quote, Haiti's radical defeat of French colonizers and enslavers, which opened the door for slavery to be outlawed everywhere in the Atlantic world is not how abolition is remembered today. Instead, conventional accounts of the end of slavery in the Americas typically center ideas about human rights from the United States, Great Britain, and France. That is the narrative that Candace is trying to push in her video, that white people in the United States and Great Britain and France were the first to abolish slavery. It's not true. She goes on to say the popular narrative of slavery and abolition usually begins with white Europeans from, Sl from Spain and Portugal colonizing the Caribbean and the Americans, replacing native populations with captive Africans whom they forced into harsh labor as slaves. It continues with the rise of the plantations supported by the English, French, and Dutch and their advent of scientific racism. In these accounts, it was only after abolitionist pamphlets and lectures culminated in bans on the international slave trade in Great Britain and the United States that the age of abolition opened. 
eventually lead into the U.S. war, which ultimately ended slavery. So she's going through the false narrative of slavery and abolition. She, she just detailed that this narrative begins, as we know, with Sp Spanish and Portugal uh, colonizers taking over the Caribbean and the, and the Americans, which led up to slavery in the United States and then the Civil War. But it is false to say, again, that white people were the first to abolish slavery. She says this conventional and terrifically flawed story of abolition is circular. White Europeans and their U.S. descendants established slavery only to destroy it. Almost magical, with the stroke of a pen, a few white men up in the 400 years of slavery. Preordained, abolition could not have happened any other way. Evangelical and warrants great gratitude, not reparation. She is detailing all of the ways in which this false narrative of abolition is flawed. She's saying that it's circular, that it's almost magical, that it's preordained, that it's evangelical. And she goes on to say this narrative oversimplifies and distorts the reality. Let me say it again to quote Dr. Dalt. Haiti then became the first nation to permanently abolish slavery. Three decades before Great Britain, over four decades before France, and more than six decades before the U.S. That's the truth. That is what we should be teaching our kids. Not this false narrative that, oh, white people did not invent slavery, and oh, they actually were the first to abolish it. Again, yes, white people did not invent slavery, but we detailed the type of chattel slavery that was here in this country, how horrific it was. And again, it is not true that white people were the first to abolish it. Black people were. Haitians were. Candace goes on to say, after centuries of human slavery, white men led the world in putting an end to the abhorrent practice. That includes the 300,000 Union soldiers overwhelmingly white who died during the Civil War. Now, am I saying that this makes white people better than anyone else? Of course not. My purpose here is to simply tell the truth, and the truth is that human history is complicated. That's not your purpose, because you cannot credibly say that white people were the first to abolish slavery. Haiti was. Let's go back to Dr. Schaefer from the Encyclopedia of Race ethnicity and society. He says uh, racism and the ideology that black Africans were of an inferior race developed in response to maintaining the slave system. Because of the stark physical contrast between Africans and Europeans and the institutionalization of slavery, racial discrimination helped propagate the racist belief system that established black inferiority. African slaves were believed to be savage subhuman creatures who as a race would benefit from slavery. He goes on to say the institution of slavery was a well-organized system constructed to maintain total control over the enslaved. The dominant minority relations were paternalistic, a system in which slave masters controlled Africans, much like fathers controlled their children by withholding all rights and responsibilities and creating total dependency. Slave codes or slave laws were established throughout the colonies to limit slaves' freedoms, and each state had its own codes. So again, this is going back to slavery as an institution, to slavery being the law of the land, the uniqueness of chattel slavery in America. This complex system of laws was enacted to give slave masters total legal control over slaves. Slave laws define slaves as personal property or chattel, as chattel, a slave could not own any property or enter into any type of contract. Consequently, slaves could not marry, nor could they seek legal protection or offer testimony against whites. Let's continue. Slave laws concerning runaways were the most severe. For the first offense, the runaway would be publicly whipped by as many as 40 lashes. For the second offense, the runaway would be branded with the letter R on the right cheek. For the third offense, the slave would be whipped by as many as 40 lashes and one ear would be cut off and males would be castrated. If a slave died because of these punishments, the owner could be compensated for the slave's full value by the public treasurer. That's what we're talking about. 
Candace. And it wasn't white people that first abolished slavery uh, in the world. Again, it was Haitians. Let's go back to what Candace said in the video. She goes on to say, instead, we're told that slavery is a white phenomenon. And like all persistent lies, this lie spawns a bunch of other lies. On social media, I come across extraordinary depictions about how Africans lived like pharaohs before Europeans came and laid waste to their paradise. I wish any of this were true, but it's not. It is astounding that Candace Owens would proclaim, basically, that Africans were living in squalor and huts and did not have kingdoms and, and empires. Not only is it astounding, but it's absolutely not true. So I want to go through a list of just some of the African empires that existed. And these are empires and kingdoms that existed before Europeans came to Africa. The Mali Empire, the Ethiopian Empire, the Kingdom of Kush, the Azandi Kingdom, Great Zimbabwe, the Kingdom of Simeon, the Songhai Empire, Ancient Egypt, the Benin Empire, Ghana, the Tuni Sultanate, the Akusimit Empire, Carthage, the Oyo Empire, the Kingdom of Jirin, the Land of Punt, the Sultanate of Mogadishu, the Adai Sultanate, the Bornu Empire, the Buso Nogoro Kingdom, the Kabu Empire, the Kasanje Kingdom, the Kingdom of Belgium, not Belgium, Belgium, the Dahomey Empire, and more and more and more and more and more. It is not true, Candace, that Africa was a land of pure waste. There were kingdoms. There were empire. Some of the wealthiest men that ever existed lived in Africa. Africa is the land of the most natural resources on the planet. Gold, silver, spices, plant life. It is home to some of the most diverse animals and mammals that exist on this planet. Africa is teeming with riches and luxury in terms of its natural resources and what we rely on. And even today, Africa has been exploited by the powers that be, whether it be America, European countries, China, etc. So it's flat out not true that Africa did not have kingdoms and empires. You are a, a descendant of Africans. So I'm not understanding why you put this cape on so much and cape for white supremacists. It doesn't make any sense. Let's go to her last point. In her video, she says, here's the third, third thing you need to know. If you think slavery is a relic of the past, you're wrong. There are some 700,000 slaves in Africa today, right now. That's the lowest estimate that I could find. Other sources say there are many more. For context, that's almost twice as many slaves as were ever brought to the United States. Again, all this video is, is trying to excuse white supremacy and the legacy of slavery in this country that was implemented by white people. Are there child soldiers, human trafficking, forced labor that exists today? Yes, we know this. But again, the child of slavery that existed here in America, it is not still going on in the form that it did currently. Thankfully, we had African Americans who resisted, who stood up, who gave their lives to fight for freedom, to fight to change the laws in this country, who gave their lives in the Civil War, who gave their lives in the Civil Rights Movement, who dedicated their entire existence to overthrowing slavery, Jim Crow, and racial segregation that existed in this country, okay? She ends the video by saying, and if black Americans began to view themselves as partners in the American dream, if we embrace the patriotic spirit that holds all men are created equal, the patriotic spirit that is our real heritage, then the race hustlers would soon be out of business. And who wants that? Okay. Black Americans have literally built this country. Our blood, sweat, and tears are in the foundations of this country. 
in our nation's capital and the progress that the North made. Because keep in mind that the slave labor not only benefited the states in the South, it also benefited the states and the people in the North as well. The cotton that was being harvested by enslaved people, who do you think bought it? People in the North as well. So the development of this country is owed in large part to African Americans. So we're a part of this American dream because we're a part of the foundation of America. Now, when you say if we embrace the patriotic spirit by continuing to criticize America in terms of the institutionalized racism that still exists, the racial discrimination that still exists, that is us embracing the patriotic spirit. America was founded by those who wanted to create a democracy and go against the monarchy that was in Europe. That is the independent spirit that America was founded on. So we are being no different when we criticize America for some of its felons. In fact, we are being patriotic. We are patriots. Because we helped build this country to make it become one of the most powerful nations in the history of the world. And the contributions that we have made to this country are innumerable. So by me speaking out and by us speaking out on this channel and those of you who support us um, by speaking out, by nullifying systemic racism and defying an unjust legal system, we are being patriots. We are patriots. And that is the spirit that I want you to take from this video. So I want to thank you all for sticking with me through this. I had to make a rebuttal to her video. Um, and it just it, it's just infuriating that that type of video is made for children who are going to be the next um, leaders of our country. We must always speak the truth and continue to speak the truth boldly and not be afraid to do so because we know the truth shall set us free. So thank you once again, you all. We will be back uh, as usual with a new video. Uh, let me know what you all think about uh, what Candace Owens said in that slavery video and what your response would be to that. I can't wait to hear your thoughts and to interact with you. That is going to be it for this video. Take care.